All right, boys, got another video for you. Check that thing out. Been pretty excited to put those on on this sucker, especially after trying out the rear shock and seeing how much more of a difference, how big of a difference it was. Um, and for those of you that are just tuning into this one because of the forks, we've got that uh, Fox in the rear too, the DHX2. Um, so anyways, yeah. We're going to be slapping this bad boy on. Um, <clears throat> two things that I already did beforehand um, that won't be part of this like little install video is that I ended up just buying another bearing. In fact, you can find these. I don't know if LunaCycle still has them in stock, but I ended up getting mine from uh, eBay because, um, like I said, Luna didn't have it in stock. So, yeah. So instead of messing around, smacking with the pipe, yada yada, this and that, I just took off the lower clamp and took it to my local dealership, AO Motorsports. Um, shout out to you guys because uh, you helped me out on this one. Um, and yeah, just brought it in. They pressed that sucker in and now didn't have to bang it, mess with it, no nothing. They did it professional and stuffed it with grease, um, as you can see. And you can almost... I'd say you can almost not even over grease these. The more grease, the better. And the grease that I used was this uh, really popular high performance grease from Park Tool. It's a mountain bike company, really known. Um, all the mountain bike guys love this uh, this grease. So, yeah, and it's waterproof. So, you're going to want to throw some waterproof stuff on there. <clears throat> Otherwise, your bearings will get up all rusted and whatnot, and they won't move freely. So, yeah, you definitely want to. Um, hit it with some waterproof grease and now I just gotta slip this guy back on there but I wanted to test with this before um, beforehand so this is me test fitting it and um, in order to go with these I had to buy the Reese Ricey I don't really know what you call this um, the top clamp it's a drop down clamp so as you can see compared to the stock one um, this would normally be sitting here like this straight on you can see how much uh, height that clamp adds to it so yeah did that and then also um, I had bought from W9 <clears throat> all these bolts all the titanium bolts so looks like based off of this because once I started taking off uh, these bolts um, there's three up here that I'm not going to be able to use so keep that in mind if you do decide to go with this from warp 9 you won't be able to use um, three of these bolts so you'll have these two which are there and then you'll be able to use these bottom two so you're gonna have three extra um, maybe I'll hit them up and they'll have the other size and I'll pay for shipping and they send me out the right ones or pay the difference whatever cuz dude it'll look sick especially these front ones and then there's that one in the back right there too that would be pretty sick if uh, we could get those on titanium um, so yeah, and then I got this for the top. It's like the cap. Boom, sucker. Um, from Race Face, another mountain bike company. Really popular. Lots of people love it. These are spacers. So we'll see if I even end up needing or how much I end up needing to cut off of this. Um, after it's all said and done, maybe I won't even cut anything. I'll just put these spacers in there. I don't know. Because one cool thing too is if you don't cut any off, then if you ever do go to resell these, you could sell them to any mountain bike guy really. And if they need a obviously a longer size then you're kind of screwed because um, then they're gonna have to get a new stem but if you don't then but I don't plan on really selling these so I'm probably gonna end up cutting it I don't know we'll see how much ends up sticking up on on this thing so that's those two things oh no got some grease on that sucker um, put those on the other side and then so Apparently to just slap these puppies on, 2022 fork, um, 27 and a half. I'll show you guys the uh, part number on the box over there in a little bit. Um, you'll need these uh, spacers as well um, in order to get these on there because these are considered a boost fork. So you'll need that. And then while I'm here, I've had this sitting here for a little bit. So I'm just, dude, we're just going to send it and put this thing on here. It's a uh, Magura 220 full floating rotor um so yeah while we're there taking all this off i'm just gonna slap this on here and to put the 220 rotor on there you will need uh the spacer as well so hopefully all this goes together perfectly fine 
Um, and you guys are gonna learn with me. And then we've got the titanium rotor, although I haven't figured out if these are the rear ones or the front ones. Um, so, two, four, six, two, four, six, I don't know. I'm gonna figure that out right now. Um, or I'll just look up this part number and see if these are the ones for the front rear. Because I know I ordered both, but the I know I left one out because I'd ordered one already. And I ordered another one with the rear wheels that I ordered from Warp 9. So, haven't gotten those yet. So, yeah, we'll figure out if we're even gonna put those on there. And then here's the extra bearings that I was telling you guys about. Um, so I got the upper one and then you've got everything else that goes on like <clears throat> the top section. Literally comes with all the bearings. All this, all this, the seal, everything. So you'll have that one bearing at the bottom that I already have pressed in there. And then you'll have the other one, the other taper bearing that sits in here. So, yeah buddy, uh, rather than having to take that thing off and struggling with it with, I mean I do have this kit but when I I looked at it I was like should I try should I not see enough to pull bearings off but ended up going against it and just freaking ordering another one start with the fresh set won't be marred won't be nothing um fresh nice dust seal want to keep this in tip-top condition so um yeah just ordered another one so to kick this video off I'm gonna tear essentially this whole thing off so probably start off with the wheel take these two bolts off the end caps for that axle the pinch bolts and then um should be able to slide this off disconnect your brake and then let's see what else will we do from there take off these two the bolt that goes straight down and then you should be able to pop off um your bars and then you can take your clamp off so yeah let's get to it I'll probably just get back on and skip that portion of the video. We'll make you guys go through the time lapse and just, uh, I essentially just showed you how to do that whole thing. So yeah, we'll uh, skip to that part. Boom. Well, there you have it. Whole front end is off. Got the forks on there. Make sure you put these suckers back on your forks too. These are, these are nice. These bump stops. <clears throat> um, so like I said, we're going to take those forks off clamps, handlebars, handlebars are kind of a little bit of a beezy to get off. Um, so what I did was I hung on to these bottom ones and then grabbed the bars with my other hand and spun them left and right, pushing up at the same time. And that finally freed them after taking off, of course, your bolt. You need to take that little cap off, kind of deceiving, but it's a little plastic cap at the top. You'll see it. And once you loosen this guy up, it'll allow it to all come back up and uh, you'll be all squared away. Uh, anyways, now this part's super easy. Uh-oh just have to pull this top one off this one to the bottom and it'll come right off like so and there's your stock one uh, super easy to get off like I said um, I'm gonna try to not get dirt on the underside of this so place that sucker upside down put that down there leave a little spacer there and now you can literally just plop the other one in there checking to see how much grease is in there looking kind of good i might i might add a little bit in there stuff a bit of grease up in there just to make it a little more waterproof um that looks pretty good though maybe a little more a little layer on the top may not hurt um so now oh shoot well, I was going to slide these in, but I forgot to take that top clamp off. So I'm going to take that top clamp off and right up to the top. And then we'll put that clamp back on. And uh, also that other, um, I don't even know what you call that, like a race or something that goes on top of the bearing. Um, and then we'll be off to the races. And then I will have to fit these guys in there as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. And then we will be right back. All right, boys, so there it is. Got everything off, got the front tire off, wheel, assembly off. Um, well, everything as you can see. Um, that's pretty simple to do. Like I explained to you guys, everything pops out pretty easy. The only thing is that when you are trying to take the handlebars off on this portion, when it's still, the stem is still all the way up there, 
and after you've gotten your cap off the middle of the stem that sits right in there in that insert um, what I did was I grabbed this portion of it with uh, one hand and then with the other hand I grabbed the handlebars and just rotated them counter to each other and uh, while I was pushing up on the bar I was pushing this down allowed it to slip on out of there pretty easy that's on there pretty tight so yep that's what I had to do to get that off the clamp and then you know we got our uh, dust cover and then a spacer there that was on the OG fork setup and now dude totally forgot that we did not need that race um, that I put grease on earlier because duh we already have one installed in here and this is a this is a tapered um, the 2022 comes with the tapered bearing not like those other ones I think the older ones came with like the needle bearing ones or something or the ball ones I don't I don't remember I ran into like some people talking about it on the forums and people recommending to going with like the other one that Luna Cycle has different brand this is like I said the OEM setup so dude this literally will just <clears throat> pop on in there now watch uh oh you see that top piece over there trying to get away so anyways yeah this will just slide up on in there i'll do that now and then i will right after i do that i will add these suckers a brake line holder and then like the that bump stop and then i'm going to check up here too and see how much grease we have um you guys can probably see a little better uh if i feel that they're could be a little more in there why not just adds to the waterproofness gives it more lubricity um like i said i like to kind of pack these things a little bit heavy anything that you don't need will end up on the little outskirts of this and you can take a rag after you install it and kind of just finally go around it get it off i know it's going to attract dirt and debris but i'd rather get that dirt and debris to stop out here than going in there and then just wreaking havoc on your bearings um so yeah that's just me so yeah like i said gonna grab that fork throw it on up there throw that clamp on the top and uh yeah we'll see you guys when this is up there cool so we're at the next spot or uh the next destination point for this whole gal um so as you can see got the fork on Two things that I ran into right away. Um, one is this spacer is normally down here underneath this clamp. And so if I left it like that, then as you could see by the thickness of that, it was gonna make this clamp sit. It was sitting about, I wanna say this, the top piece of this clamp was probably sitting about halfway on this nut to take out um, the cartridge or whatever's in there all oh, the volume space was in here because they're air um so swapped it around put the clamp down here put that up there um and there you have it now it works and we've got enough clamping area on the forks um and then the second thing is when you go to turn the bars to the left <clears throat> doink so it hits right there <clears throat> so i'm grab my little dremel and uh go to town on this little area and shave a little bit of this off until it can finally clear. Um, I'm gonna do it nice and slowly just so that I don't remove more material than I need to. Um, so yeah, those that's one of the things that I'm gonna do right now. Like I said, dremel that off. And like I explained there on the, that spacer up here, sorry, I won't even pay attention where I was pointing the camera. And so another thing too now we know uh, these cables freaking got back here little suckers uh, so the other thing that we got or to do is cut this tube down um, so the stock bolt and even the little cap fits perfectly on the race face one that I got um, and as you can see here so if you were to just try to put it down on here like so it's not gonna sit down nice and flush so what you'll have to do is I'm gonna have this one at the very top um, is cut it uh, flush where this little thin spacer sits at so I'm gonna make my mark right where that's sitting flush like I said and grab a little um, I could probably even cut it right here honestly um, 
I'm gonna get a little saw, make a little notch just so I know where to cut. I'm gonna cut that off and then we will be back to seeing the rest of uh, this install. But so far, haven't had any issues, especially, I mean, the biggest thing is probably that bearing. Um, just trying to get that off and put it back on. I just, I've, I've tried to do that before on uh, my FC450 and that was a pain, uh, even with those tools down there. So 60 bucks or I think it's like 40 or was 40 something on Luna and you got yourself a new one. You can pound it down if you want or take it to your dealership like I did and boom, literally just, it'll be, the install will be as easy as you have seen this go so far. So. Anyways, I'm going to get to those two things, and uh, yeah, we'll be back to when I'm done. Alright boys, so here's what I did. Uh, hopefully this is coming out clearly. <clears throat> so to get my line, I just grabbed one of these suckers right here, you know, a little blade. And uh, I just went all the way around, kind of doing this, rather than taking it off and marking it. Um, and so now I know that the very bottom of this line, I still got to go like at least a mill or two past that. And you see that nice little shiny line that came out? So now I can just take this off. Boom. And, uh, uh oh, <clears throat> all of them came apart. Pull this down or take the bars off, pull this down, make my cut. And then we should be pretty close uh, when it comes to that. And then I uh, figured I'd share that. Still gotta hit that with the little Dremel. So gonna do that and then we'll be back. But I figured I'd add how I did that rather than you know, kind of leave you guys in the dark, dude, because, you know, we found a little simple solution to having to market and possibly having to recut, so there you go. Okay, so everything is on there. Um, like I said, use the Dremel to get everything out of there so that it wouldn't be impeding the bottom clamp. And as you can see, now she turns all the way, no problemo. Um, didn't have to do too much. A little bit of grinding and got her all nice and worked out um <clears throat> so we got that done and then we've got this uh the spacers up here as you can see oh i got my little gap um which you'll need so that one this can sit in there and it'll sit flush and then you will also be able to because essentially what this thing does once you insert that uh um i don't even know what you call that that nut but this is what I'm going to be using to put it on there and see what they call it on there the threadless nut setter uh, is a tool um, so they're calling that a nut so where's that sucker at and here it is I screwed it in just a little bit ago so this came with the forks um, and essentially so like I was saying is you'll drive this down in there here let me take this off um, so you'll drive this down in there and it'll sit right about yay inside the, um, the stem tube. And once you have that there, I mean, you can see that your, uh, your stock one has one too. And then as you saw with that one, it was going to be sitting right about here-ish and you'll be able to see that the, this, uh, bolt will go all the way down in there and essentially pull it up and cinch it down. So that's the plan and all you got to do is literally just hammer this down in there and it's set so i don't have um <clears throat> my direct mount clamps yet which is kind of a bummer so what i might end up having to do again once i do have those and then i remove this it's either i'm gonna have to add a whole bunch of washers to make up the difference here or i end up just cutting this down in there again um Hopefully I'll be able to just use this again, screw it back in there and punch it further down and cut this. Um, and that'll be the solution there. But if not, then like I said, um, washers will always do the trick. You're just going to have a whole freaking stack of them. So either way, don't matter. I don't care. Uh, we'll get it figured out one way or another. So yeah, anyways, I'm um, going to punch this sucker in right now. And then <clears throat> someone got a little bit ahead of myself too. I started uh, putting on this router, the Magura full floating one. So as you can see, this sucker will make, oh, this one's not as bad. Um, well, I wouldn't even say that it's bad, but normally full floating rotors will make 
will make a lot more noise than this. And uh, here, I'll show you guys what I mean. So I have those on my Aprilla. And you'll see, you can really notice them on this guy. So I thought the noise was going to be kind of like that on that, but apparently not. Which is kind of nice because then, you know, less noise that you have, less little vibrations that you have on the front end too. Um, sometimes you can feel those kind of vibrate when you barely start clamping onto the brakes if you're using very minimal brake. But anyways, that's besides the point. So, um, yeah, so I putting those on there. And one thing I did notice, remember when I told you guys I was going to put those titanium nuts? Um, I should have checked the freaking part number on those. I don't know. Oh, here they are. Um, so this T-I, that must, that must mean, so see, okay. I must have ordered with the other, with my wheel set from Warp, I must order the front ones in because I'm guessing this is supposed to mean Suron, TI for titanium and then the R is for rear, rotor brake because yeah, these suckers won't fit in there. Um, I grabbed one really quick and then I looked at it and I was like, wait, that is definitely not going to fit in the hole. I went to put it in there and they didn't fit so we're going to have to run these for now and uh, these are extended though because of the adapter um so i am gonna have to hit them up and see if maybe they've got some extendo sidoka ones um that way we can that way we can run those ones and yeah so like i just said gonna get that um pounded down in there and uh get this all clinched up and then gonna have to replace those titanium bolts with wherever they went they're somewhere down in there and then uh once we do that we'll be able to replace also these pinch bolts and get the wheel mounted on here so yeah let me do a little bit of that that i just mentioned i'll show you guys here real quick all right guys so as you can see i've got that sucker set in there that as well is a, a nice and easy mod especially with that tool um i have seen people use like a long really long thread and then it's just like a threaded rod and they'll use a screw with the big wash on the bottom with another one at the top that fits obviously inside that too but dude for like i think i paid 25 bucks or something like that for that tool it takes you a couple of seconds you no know, messing with nuts make sure you got the right washers yada yada boom and so now we can that we've got that guy in there we can literally just plop this guy on in there like so, tighten it up, make sure you got the lettering and such facing in the way that you want it, and off to the races. And while I was in there doing that, since I took uh, this entire thing off, I didn't want to do it on the bike uh, just because I didn't want to have to um, lower this thing anymore. All right, guys, so as you can see, I've got that sucker in there now. Um, Ended up taking this entire fork. I was going to have to take these top clamps so I could get everything kind of routed like how I wanted um, back here. And I got it all set now. So um, I'll show you guys what the front side looks like now. So after you're done with that, you literally just take your the cap, that little washer, um, and screw it down on in there. Make sure all these are facing the direction that you want them. Tighten it down, and you're done. And so... What I was talking about for the front, I kind of rerouted some some uh, some of the cabling in here. Um, this was kind of, if you guys were to go back a little a little bit, you'll see that this was kind of all pinched up in a weird way, where it was like back here, and so um, that happened when I was installing these brake lines in here. You gotta kind of twist it um, to lock it in there, and so it starts turning your uh, your brake your your brake line. So I finally, while I was here, I said, you might as well just uh, get that over with. And so what I did was I just took this off and then spun it once. And now we've got this coming directly at us like this. Um, so now we'll be able to use those little rubber grommets that are on the seat and get everything nice and cinched up, nice and organized, a couple of zip ties maybe, and we are solid. And then also another thing that I wanted to bring up too is I don't know if you guys noticed, but I took off the surround, uh, I don't know what you want to call these things, like bump stops or something. 
um, just because these were way too loose on the fork itself as you can see here I mean obviously it's not on all the way but you can see how loose it is it's exactly almost the same looseness while it was on the uh, fork itself so these are a bit thicker um, which is what I liked and why I wanted to use them as you can see right there but um, I didn't really want to put like I don't know duct tape electrical tape or something around here just to hold these in place and hope that they stayed in place and then if I were to turn the bars too far or something then literally it'll be clamp that smacks right into the frame um, so yeah I just put the the ones that came with the the Fox 40s and they got a little thing at the end that says 40 I don't know if you guys can see that there but anyways that's there um, so yeah now that I got this all nice and routed kind of how I want it I'm gonna tighten down that bolt and then swap out these for the uh, titanium ones and uh, tighten these up I'm gonna look at the manual see what they specify for uh, um, torque settings and yeah get this kind of wrapped up this one I feel like I'll end up loosening up again this top one just so that I could align it with the tire and then see how straight it is later but for now we'll get it we'll get it uh at least you know kind of I I to eye it a little it seems like right now it's a little leaning to the left side of the bike if you're sitting on it so I'll probably turn these a little bit to the left and um yeah we'll see we'll see how it aligns so I'll see you guys in a bit all right guys there you have it boom how much nicer those ti bolts look <clears throat> and they feel like plastic too kind of cool how light these things are um so for these directly off the fox website i'll see if you guys can even see this um <clears throat> it says 65 and then inch pounds remember that this is inch pounds so these i set it at 65 inch pounds and then the bottom of this uh the clamp um, that one said 8 newton meters which is a little bit more than 65 inch pounds so uh, my torque wrench has a little conversion thingy uh, where I just switch it over so these I did a 65 inch pounds and then these are just an 8 newton meter whatever that is um, and make sure whatever you do you do not do foot pounds um, so if, like I said if like your uh, your torque wrench has the ability to swap between them do that and you'll nail these so Tighten these up, these top ones, these, like I said, I did um, to the specs for this here. And then obviously got my bars freaking torqued up. And I went ahead and threw on this little brake line holder um, that came with the Fox 40s. And then I started putting on the, the caliper, figured I'd show you guys. So there's the, the adapter, or I wanna say, yeah. And then there's your caliper. Um, and also don't forget to use a little bit of Loctite on those suckers. Um, so now the only thing left to do, and then as you guys can see here, I routed up my wires a little bit. Um, kind of digging the, the neatness of uh, this setup. This could be a little lower, but this is for my front um, brake line. But you can kind of play with this. Maybe I should have done a little lower, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I could always cut a, little, cut a little bit more if I wanted to um, but I didn't know if these or maybe in a future setup there's something that's longer like a dirt bike version so um, I ended up leaving them um, um, a little bit on the long side both the front and rear in case so you can see here on the rear one in case I did decide to go with like that extended swing arms that I've been seeing I doubt it but you never know so um did that as a precaution so now the only thing left to do that we've got over here is mount up that wheel get this centered on the the disc and tighten everything up down here and oh and then the front number the number plate and that's pretty much it so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh be right back and also one little quick one um, <clears throat> when you do get this kit for the uh, the boost spacers that you will need to align that rotor with uh, your caliper 
you will only use the spacer for that and those long bolts and then these guys you will have as extras you won't have to use these um this is like a mountain bike kit and so you don't necessarily need everything that comes in the kit that they sell you so those are the two things that uh you will need bolt and that spacer and leave these out all right guys well she's just about all buttoned up um just by looking at it right now it looks like when i get her on the ground in a little bit i'm gonna have to tweak the tires a little bit because it doesn't look like it's aligning right with the the handlebar so i'll do that loosen those suckers up tweak a little bit make sure the point is straight in the right direction um got the plate on uh, and what i did do here was added a little piece of uh electric tape where these zip ties were going to be sitting and then i just moved the bump spots all the way down just so that as this is moving up and down i probably should have even added a little bit more on the sides but it doesn't look like these are touching other than like this one right here on the top <clears throat> i just don't want it to wear into the nice kashima coating finish um as it's bouncing up and down but really it only looks like it's that side um that little bit that's touching so did that to keep that from uh, messing up the coating these bolts up here that are stainless steel are hidden, which is perfect. We got our TI ones on display. Got the uh, brake line on here. I did take off the, the stock one that was on the surround itself because just like the original bump stops, they um, it was super loose. So as you can see, this thing turns fine and dandy. No resistance, no nothing. You shouldn't tighten that bolt down too hard. Um, you just wanted enough just to cinch everything on up there so um there you have it now the only thing that's left to do oh of course um i don't know if i mentioned this earlier in the video um i did this within two days just taking a little bit of uh of my time to get this all assembled but uh i did i don't know if you guys can see where i'm pointing my finger put the that adapter in there for this rotor and it does on the rotor say look at what it says not for what does it say not for CL adapter use so don't know if that's what they mean by that adapter right there but super sturdy people have done it and used it sounds like you guys hear that so sounds like I'm gonna have to readjust my brakes a little bit more um, it's kind of hard to get it on these ones just because the full floating ones these discs are designed to move back and forth um, so it's kind of hard to get it perfectly on these ones uh, I do do that like little trick I'm sure you guys have seen or I don't know if I've even showed it but you'll spin the wheel while these two are loose and then uh, you smack the front brake and Obviously, while this is spinning a little faster, and that will align it up so that it's pretty freaking and dead on. Like I said, on the regular ones that are like that, that aren't full floating, they're where the disc can't move around. Super easy. You do that, and it'll be spot on just about every time. Or maybe it might take you one or two times, but then you won't have any of that noise. But if this is as good as I'm going to be able to get it, judging by the noise, it's very, very little. And in some areas of uh, the disc, so it almost leads me to believe that just some of these um areas on the disc itself here if you guys can hopefully you guys can see that pretty well but um yeah it just means that the the disc has moved around a little bit in some areas more than others so um not entirely too worried about it last thing that i need to do is tighten up the pinch bolts um throw some air in here and put it to the recommended weight that the Fox um, recommends. And for these, it looks like we're gonna have on the pinch bolts, 19 inch pounds all the way down, even the axle bolt too. Um, yeah, axle bolt, pinch bolts, yep. So 19 all the way around. Um, and that will pretty much wrap up this uh, little video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it makes uh, installing yours a little easier on the 2022 or 2021 and up. Not really sure when they changed all this. Some of the stuff up like I was talking about earlier with the tapered bearings. But 
Um, yeah, hope it helps and uh, see you guys in the next video.